Hey, so I'm gonna warn you now, this might be a bit of a lengthy video. So we're gonna talk about all the different nomenclature rules and writing of chemical formula rules for binary ionic compounds, as well as polyatomic ions. So binary means two. Specifically, we're gonna have one metal and one non-metal for this beginning stuff. When it's only one ion, it's also known as a mono or a monatomic ion monatomic ions, which just means a single element. So we're going to write the metal first, followed by the nonmetal. Now the big thing is, we're always going to change the endings of the nonmetals to IDE. So for example, chlorine will change to chloride. Where does the IED go? Well, you kind of just take letters off one at a time until it sounds right. Sometimes you take no letters off. All the halogens all behave the same. So chlorine, I drop I-N-E and add I-D-E. For bromine, again, it's a, it's a halogen as well. I'll drop I-N-E and I'll add I-D-E. So instead of bromine, when it becomes an ion, it is bromide. Bromide. Oxygen. Oxygen's not a halogen, so different rules. So again, you just try all the letters at once and add IDE sound, see if it sounds right. Oxygenide, no. Drop the N. Oxygenide, no. Oxygide, no. Oxyide, a little bit better, but no. Oxide, yeah, so I'm gonna drop Y, G, E, N, and so I get oxide. And for sulfur, it's gonna be, well, what do you think it's gonna be? You should technically know this from previous classes. Good, it's sulfide, sulfide. So I just dropped a U-R and it's sulfide. So again, the metal is going to stay exactly the same. The non-metal, you're going to change to I-D-E. And the only reason, again, we're changing these to I-D-E is because these non-metals have become ions. Well, if it's not an ion, then you keep the name the exact same. So let's do a couple practice. MgCl2. Well, look on a periodic table. Mg is magnesium. So this is magnesium. Cl on the periodic table is chlorine, but since it's an ion, it's part of a co ionic compound, um, we have to change the ending. So instead of magnesium chlorine, it's magnesium chloride. Okay. Next, Na3N. Na is sodium. And then N is nitrogen, but because it's an ion, it's part of this ionic compound, it's going to be nitride, sodium nitride. Ooh, one of the harder ones. Al2SE3, okay? What do you think this one's going to be called? So, Al is aluminum. That doesn't change. Se is selenium. So that's going to change into the following. Selenide. Selenium changes into selenide. So this is aluminum selenide. Now you may be wondering, which you shouldn't because you're supposed to know this already, what these numbers are right here. Those numbers are very important because they are what's used to balance the charges, which is what we're going to do next. Again, notice I didn't name these numbers. That's for covalent, which is going to be in the next video. So for ionic, that's actually, I want to emphasize this. In ionic compounds, we don't use numerical prefixes for however many, the, or whatever the charges, or however many you have of anything like that. You do not use any numerical prefixes for ionic. You just name the metal, and you name the nonmetal. If I was to go the other way around, write the formula. Step one is we write down the symbol for each element, and then we balance the charges. So you need to have this memorized. If I was to draw a periodic table, which is going to be hard to do with this device I'm using, but I will try. Not very good, but still. All the alkali metals, including hydrogen, are worth plus one because they have one valence electron, so they need to lose one to become stable. It gives them a plus one charge. Alkali, uh, alkaline earth metals, yes, are all positive two because they have two valence electrons, etc. You should know this by now. Family 3A is plus three. Family 4A is plus or minus 4. 5A is negative 3. 6A is negative 2. The halogen, 7A is negative 1. And the noble gases are 0. 
So you have to memorize what are these representative numbers. Now, there are some exceptions. So for example, tin and lead, which are down here in the uh, period, not period, wow, family four, these can actually be plus two or plus four. So tin and lead can be plus two or plus four. So we'll have to use Roman numerals for those. And we'll talk about Roman numerals in the next video, uh, not next video, but in the next part when we get to transition metals. Because all the transition metals, for the most part, have multiple charges. So you have to use Roman numerals for those. There are two exceptions that you definitely need to know. Zinc, zinc, which is right around here, is always, I think it's a liar, is always positive two. So zinc is always a positive two ion, always. And silver is always a positive one ion. So you will never use Roman numerals with these. So these are like one of the two or two of the few, very, very, very few transition metals that never use Roman numerals. It's always zinc, it's always positive two, silver's always positive one. Tin and lead are two of the base, I think they're the only two that I know of. They're the only two representative elements that do have multiple charges. So even though they're in family four, these can be either plus two or plus four. So you do have to use Roman numerals for those. Anyways, let's get back to this. Step one, write out the symbols for calcium and oxide. Calcium, the CA. Oxide, says it's an ion, that's oxygen, is O. Calcium is right here. It is a alkaline earth metal. It's worth plus two. Um, now, you don't write this. You don't actually write this. I'm just going to do it so you can visually see it. But calcium is positive two. Oxygen is in family 6A, which means that's everything in 6A is negative two. And if you look at these, positive 2 and negative 2, if you put those together, you get 0. So the charges balance out already, so you don't really need to worry about that. So you're done. Once you, once you write CAO, you're done. And that was a little bit too big of an eraser. There we go. Aluminum sulfide. So aluminum is AL. Why is that not writing? Aluminum is AL. It's in Family 3A, so it's positive 3. Sulfide is S, sulfur. It's worth negative 2. So again, I'm going to write these in here. You don't actually write this, though. But positive 3, negative 2. This is more done in your head. So notice, this is positive 3, this is negative 2. If you put those together, that gives you an overall charge of positive 1. And that's not good. You don't want that. You want to make sure that they cancel each other out, the charges. Oops, I'll keep that there, actually. So sometimes what you do is you go to the smaller one and say, okay, what can I multiply 2 by, negative 2 by, to cancel out the positive 3? Well, there's no whole number you can do that to. So then you ask yourself, what do 3 and 2 both go into? They both go into 6. So what do I multiply positive 3 by to get positive 6? Well, if I multiply this by 2, so I have positive 3 times 2, that gives me positive 6. So if I have two aluminums, that will give me positive 6. What can I multiply negative 2 by to get negative 6? Okay, because I want those to equal 0. Well, if I multiply 3, there we go. If I multiply negative 2 by 3, that will give me negative 6. So I need three sulfides. I need three negative 2s. Because when you put positive 6 and negative 6 together, that gives you the 0, then you're done. So again, I have to balance out my charges. I have to balance the charges. The goal is to make the charges, when you add them up, equal 0. If I have two positive 3s, that's positive 6. 3, negative 2, negative 6. Positive 6, negative 6 is 0. Next one, radium nitride. Radium nitride. So, Radium is Ra. Nitride is N. Next, you got to look at the charges. The charge for radium, it's an uh, alkaline earth metal, is positive 2. Nitride is negative 3. Okay. What do you think the formula is going to be for this one, then? Good. Hopefully you got it. For this one, again, 2 and 3, they both go into 6. So how many positive 2 radiums do I need? I need 3 of them. So I need 3 RAs. I need 3 radiums. 
says that will give me three positive twos, which is positive six. And then how many nitrides, how many negative threes do I need? I need two of those, because if I have two negative threes, that's negative six. Positive six, negative six is zero. So again, you don't write any of this I'm doing right here, like I've said a million times already, I know. The final thing you need to show is right here. That's the big thing. So those are all binary. That's just binary. Now, here's more binaries, but this time we're going to incorporate transition metals. When you have a transition metal, these are metals that have multiple charges. So, for example, iron would be plus 2 or plus 3. So you have to emphasize that. You have to show that. How? You show that by, in the name, only in the name do you use Roman numerals. Again, I'm going to emphasize that. In the name only. In the name only do you use Roman numerals, which signifies the charge. It's what is the charge of the metal. Not how many metals there are, not how many. It's the charge of the metal. So example, iron, Roman numeral 2 oxide, or sometimes just said iron 2 oxide. This Roman numeral 2 tells me iron has a plus 2 charge. So if I wanted to write the formula, that would be F, E, and then oxide to O, iron 2, plus 2, oxide is negative 2, positive 2, negative 2, they're done, they're balanced, great. Iron 3 oxide, again, still F, E, and O, but this time, this iron has a positive 3 charge. So, positive 3 for iron, negative 2 for oxygen. It's one of those, they got both going to 6 kind of thing. So I got to multiply iron 3. I need 2 positive 3 irons. And I need 3 negative 2 oxides. So 2 times positive 3 gives me a positive 6 for the iron total. I need 3 negative 2 oxides to give me negative 6 to get that total. So they equal out in the end. So again, in the name only do you use Roman numerals. And then writing the formulas is basically the exact same thing. Now, if we go the opposite way, this is a little bit harder. So I have CuBr2. Here, whenever you start naming things, you always got to do the following questions. One, is it a metal and a nonmetal or two nonmetals? Basically, you ask them, is it an ionic bond or a covalent bond? This is an ionic bond. In the next video, you'll see covalent bonds, but in all these, it's ionic. It's ionic bond because I have a metal and a nonmetal. All right? That tells me no prefixes. Two, is it a transition metal and or is it lead or tin? Okay, yes, it is a transition metal. It's copper. So since it's copper, that means it's a transition metal, which is not zinc or silver. So I'm going to have a Roman numeral. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say copper, parentheses. I don't know the number yet, so I'm just going to leave that be for now. And then Br2 would be bromide. Okay, so how do I figure out the charge of copper? Well, I know the charge of bromine or bromide. Bromide is negative 1. Okay, how many bromides do I have? I have two of them. So that gives me a total of negative 2. I have two negative 1, so that gives me a total of negative 2. That means to cancel out the charges, I need a total, a total charge of positive 2 for the copper, because that will give me a total charge of 0. So then I say, okay, how many coppers are there? There's one copper. One times what? What do I multiply one by to get positive two? Well, easy. One times positive two gives you positive two. So the Roman numeral will be two because that's the charge of the copper. So it's copper Roman numeral two bromide. To do another one, Ti3P. All right, Ti is titanium. First off, is this ionic or covalent bond? It's ionic bond. Is it a transition metal? Yes, it is a transition metal. Is it zinc or silver? No. So yes, it has a multiple charge. So Ti is titanium. It's a Roman numeral, so I'll leave some space here. P is phosphorus, but because it's an ion, it's going to be phosphide. Now I need to figure out the charge. All right. What's the charge on phosphide? Phosphide is negative 3. How many phosphides are there? There's only one phosphide. 
So that's a total of negative three, which means I need a total charge of positive three to make this equal to zero. So then I say, how many titaniums are there? There are three titaniums, there's three of them. So three times what gives me positive three? Three, because I have three titaniums, three times what gives me positive three? Well, three times one gives you positive three. So for this one, the charge would be titanium, or I wrote titan, by the way. No one caught me on that. Titanium, Roman numeral one, phosphide. Titanium, Roman numeral one, phosphide. And I'm going to erase that because I don't like how that looks. There we go. Titanium, Roman numeral one, phosphide. Cool. Next one. CRS. All right, try it out. What do you guys think CRS is going to be? Here we go. CR is chromium. It is a transition metal. Chromium. This might really did do it. There you go. Chromium. I'll leave parentheses in there because, again, I know it's a transition metal which has multiple charges. And then sulfide. Now remember, it's not how many there are. So notice, this isn't titanium Roman numeral three because you got three titaniums. The Roman, nor is this copper one because of, again, whatever, how many copper you have. It's all about the charge. The Roman numeral is the charge of the transition metal. For this one, you don't know chromium, but you know sulfide. What's the charge on sulfide? The charge on sulfide is negative two. I only have one of them. So total, it's negative two which means the total here has to be positive two. So when I add them up, I get zero. How many chromiums are there? Well, there's only one chromium. So one times what equals positive two? Well, one times plus two equals positive two. So the charge on chromium is positive two. So this would be chromium, Roman numeral two, sulfide. So that's all the binary stuff. Okay, that's binary writing formulas, that's binary writing the symbols, and this is binary using transition metals. Now let's get into the real hardcore memorization. You gotta memorize all these polyatomic ions. There are some shortcuts though. So for example, oxoanions are polyatomic ions that have one or more oxygens, and they obey the following rules. If you have one more oxygen than the eight version of that, you have to use the prefix per. So for example, chlorate is ClO3 negative one, or just sometimes they say ClO3 negative. That's chlorate. But if you were to add another oxygen onto that to make it ClO4 negative one. So notice the negative, the charge did not change. The charge did not change. The new name of that is gonna be per chlorate. So you have to add in this per. Number two, if the ion has one less oxygen than the eight, then you change the eight to an eight. So for example, ClO3 negative one is chlorate. I usually call the eights the kind of like the base elements. They're almost like your basic units from conversions. But if it's ClO2 where I take one oxygen away and negative, by the way, it's still negative one it becomes chlorite. So again, when you take one oxygen, one oxygen away from the base, it becomes ite. When the ion has two less oxygen atoms than the eight anion, then the prefix hypo is used as well as the suffix ite. So now chlorate, ClO3 negative one, becomes ClO, so I took two oxygens away, so there's only one oxygen there, it's still negative one, that becomes hypochlorite. It's easy. Here's the thing. I'm going to see if I can move this out of the way. There we go. At minimum, if you just memorize all the basic polyatomic ions and you memorize these three rules, even though that says one for whatever reason, you can pretty much name almost all the other polyatomic ions because these are kind of like shortcuts. So if I have SO4, negative two, that's sulfate. But if I take one oxygen away, it's still negative two, but instead of sulfate, it's sulfite. 
So instead of memorizing that SO3 negative 2 is sulfite, as long as I know that SO4 is sulfate, and I see I took one less oxygen away, and if you take one less oxygen, those all end in ite, it becomes a little bit easier. It's a little less memorization. All right, let's get rid of those real quick. Also, another shortcut. All the halogen polyatomic ions behave the exact same way. So chlorate is always going to be ClO3, negative 1. Bromate is BrO3, negative 1. Fluorate is... Um, is it fluoroate? I think it's fluorate. Fluorate is FO3, negative 1. And idoate, idoate is IO3, negative 1. So they all behave, all the halogens behave the same way. So that's another little shortcut. But all those same rules apply when you name with these polyatomic ions. The biggest thing, though, is if you have more than one polyatomic ion that you need for balancing charges, we got to put parentheses, parentheses around them. And I'll show you that. All right, next one. There we go. So let's do sodium. Actually, we'll go with the other side. We'll do this side. Copper 2 phosphate. So copper 2, that's a transition metal. Copper is Cu. Phosphate. So you got to know, okay, phosphate, that's not on the periodic table. That's a polyatomic ion. And it's a polyatomic ion you got to memorize. Phosphate is PO4. Copper 2 has a plus 2 charge. Phosphate is negative 3. All right, so what are they, it's one of those 2 and 3s. So where they both go into? They both go into 6. I have to multiply positive 2 by 3, so I need 3 coppers. To get 3 times positive 2 is positive 6. And I need 2 phosphates. Now, here's the thing. I'm not going to write a 2 right here. Because if I put a 2 there, that looks like 42. So you can't do that. What you do, if you need more than one polyatomic ion, and you only do this for polyatomic ions, not monatomic ions, polyatomic ions, you put parentheses around them and then put the two. So whenever you need more than one polyatomic ion, put it in parentheses. Aluminum sulfite. All right, aluminum is Al. Sulfite, ooh, ite. Ite means you take one oxygen away. So sulfate is SO4, so sulfite is SO3. Then all you do is you put plus 3 for aluminum, negative 2 for sulfite. Again, another 3 and a 2, so let me get rid of that. The aluminum for this one will be 2. 2 times 3 is 6. To get the negative 6, I need 3 sulfites, so I put parentheses, and then 3. And that one's done. Okay, sorry, the sub was in here, so I kind of was looking like I was talking to myself, so I whispered there. Anyways, for the next one, SN is tin. Now, be careful. Remember, tin is one of those representative elements that has multiple charges. So, for this one, it's going to be tin and then parentheses something, SO2 parentheses 2. Hmm, so for this, SO2 parentheses 2. You don't know what SO2 is, but you know SO4. SO4 is sulfate, but if you take two oxygens away, remember if you take two away, I'll move down here. When you take two away, you become a hypoite. So now, it would be hypo, Sulfite, hyposulfite, because again, it was sulfate, but since it's missing two oxygens, that's a hypoite, hyposulfite. To figure out the charge, well, let's look at the charge of hyposulfite. Hyposulfite is negative two. I have two of them, so two times negative two is negative four, which means I, had, I need a plus four charge to cancel this out. How many tins are there? There's one tin. So 1 times what? What do I multiply 1 by to get positive 4? Well, 1 times positive 4 is 4. So this would be 10 Roman numeral 4 hyposulfite. That's a pretty tough one. And then the last one, 
NH4 parentheses 2 Cr2O7. So these are two polyatomic ions. NH4, that is ammonium. That's the only positive one polyatomic ion I think you need to know. So NH4 is ammonium. Cr2O7 is another polyatomic ion, and that is dichromate. So that was an easy one. Just got to name that. So you guys try this one. Sodium chromate. What's going to be the formula for sodium chromate? Okay, first off, good. Sodium is Na. Horrible A. There we go. Chromate is CrO4. That's chromate. Now, charges. Sodium's plus one. Chromate's negative two. So, they're not equal. What can I multiply one by to get positive two to cancel this one out? Well, multiply by two. So I need two sodiums. I need two positive one charges to cancel out the one negative two charge. So notice, I don't put parentheses around this because it's a monatomic ion. You only put parentheses around polyatomic ions. Copper two dihydrogen phosphate. Whew, that's a tough one. So this one I'll do for you guys. Cu is copper two. Dihydrogen phosphate. Dihydrogen would be H2 phosphate PO4. And this one has a charge of negative one. So this is negative one. This is positive two. Again, what kind of, how can I cancel out the positive two? I need another negative one. So I need two dihydrogen phosphates. I need two negative ones to cancel out the one positive two charge. So that's that one. Ca, Can2, or it's not Ca, Ca, Cn2. What do you think that one's called? Good, that's an easy one. So that's just calcium. Is it a transition metal? No, so I don't need any Roman numerals. Don't need any Roman numerals. And then Cn, that's a polyatomic ion, and that's cyanide. And then for the very, very, very last one, LiHCO3. That one I'll do for you guys real quick. That's lithium. Lithium, that looks horrible, but that's lithium. And then HCO3 is, you can either say hydrogen carbonate, or a shortcut is to call it bicarbonate. So that's everything in terms of nomenclature. I told you this was going to be a very, very long video. We're going about 30 minutes at this point. But this is everything you need to know in terms of ionic nomenclature. So again, Hopefully you guys got it down. If not, you might have to rewatch parts of these, but we will practice this stuff in class, and you're definitely going to practice this during winter assignments.